Good evening and welcome to our first online um, essentials video. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can do something that is more interactive where we can all get together and talk. Um, but for this week we're just going to do um, just a quick video to introduce our new grammar for the week. First of all, I'd like to point you to chart A and it may be a little hard to see so please go ahead and get your own charts out. Joel and Lee are here with me so that we can talk about it. First of all, we have four sentence structures. We've talked about simple, compound, and complex, this week we get to finally introduce the compound complex sentence pattern. We also have four sentence purposes. We have talked about all of these, declarative, exclamatory, interrogative, and imperative. And we have talked about and um, uh, reviewed quite a bit and practiced quite a bit with these seven sentence patterns. Today we're just focusing back on SVI and SVTDO. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, moms, I can't encourage you enough to get out your guide and read through very carefully um, the dialectic portion of our lesson this week. You're really gonna need to extend this with your student. We're not getting the practice we usually do in class. Um, I won't have the time to go into all the explanations. And so that is something you definitely want to focus on at home and equip yourself with that understanding. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I, I definitely want to be available to equip you as we move forward. So let's go ahead and start with our SVI pattern. What do we know about an SVI sentence? It means subject, verb, and transitive. So <laughs> S means subject. And then VI is verb intransitive. Probably won't put the T on, on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every sentence has a independent subject, subject and, a, and verb. <laughs> a verb, right? Every sentence has a subject and a verb. And so if I were to write an SVI sentence, a intransitive verb is a verb that does not do what? It's um, not like there's nothing in action. The verb. It doesn't transfer any action to anything, it just stops. So Harold is with us today. And Harold, to get into the room today, Harold rolled. rolled. <laughs> <laughs> Joel rolled him into the room for me. Okay, Leah, can you give me another SVI sentence? Um Harold ate. Harold ate. Notice both of these sentences have a subject and a verb. Just a subject and a verb. We know that verb is intransitive because there's nothing after it. There is no action being transferred to something else. Joel, give me an SVI sentence with a different subject. Um, I slept. <laughs> I slept. <coughs> Joel chose a pronoun for his subject because remember a subject can be either a noun or a pronoun, right? Okay, so we have reviewed then the SVI pattern. What about S V T D O? Now here, what do we know about this sentence pattern? Being subject, verb, transitive, direct object. Okay, so we still, what is the same, Joel, about this pattern and this pattern? What is the same? They both have a subject and a verb. They both have a subject and a verb because every sentence has to have uh, a subject, subject and, and a verb. verb. Okay, but this time, Harold eats bugs. Okay, now I have a subject and a verb transitive and what's called a direct object. A direct object is a noun that receives the action of the verb. And it, I would do it like this. I would ask the question, Harold eats what? Bugs. Bugs. That is the direct object. Harold eats bugs. Leah, can you give me an SVTDO sentence? Um. Uh, with Harold or... Either one. Yeah, okay. you can choose a new subject um, or use Harold. Harold, uh, writes a paper. 
Harold writes a paper. He is a talented hedgehog. <laughs> a very talented one. I'm having a hard time fitting that on here. A paper. And Joel, can you give me... Well, let's test this first, Leah. Okay. What is the verb in your sentence? Writes. Writes. Who writes? Harold. Harold. Harold writes what? Paper. A paper. We know this is a direct object. It's a noun that comes after the verb because that receives the we action. Ask the question, Harold, who, who writes? Wait, uh, who, who or what? No, wait. Harold writes who or what? what? Right. Paper. Yeah. Does paper rename Harold? Nope. Does it describe Harold? Nope. So it's the direct object. Must be the direct object. And so we know then that this verb is transitive. And A is just an adjective. Exactly. All right, Joel, give me an SVTDO sentence without Harold as the subject, a new subject. Um, um <laughs> it's hard. Mom erased the board. Mom. Oh, let me spell that right. Erase. <laughs> <coughs> the board. Okay, let's test this. What is the verb? Erased. Erased. Who erased? Mom. Mom. Mom erased what, Joel? The board. The board. We know that mom erased what? The board. That's a direct object. It's a noun that comes after the transitive verb. Now, all six of these sentences, Harold rolled, Harold ate, I slept, Harold eats bugs, Harold writes a paper, Mommy raced the board. They are all one kind of purpose. What is, or excuse me, one kind of structure. What is the structure of each one of these sentences? Simple. They are all simple. How do you know that? Because uh, a simple sentence is just Harold eats bugs. A simple sentence consists of one subject and one verb. That's right. A simple sentence consists of one subject and one verb, and it can stand alone. It's an independent thought. All of these can stand alone as an independent thought. Now, the next structure is called compound. Joel, what is a compound sentence? A compound sentence consists of one, sub one, one independent, independent clause, clause with a subject and a verb, and another independent clause, a subject and a verb. Joined by a coordinating conjunction. Joined by a coordinating conjunction. So we can make these independent clauses, these mm -hmm. simple sentences, into <coughs> compound sentences by adding a coordinating conjunction in between them. So let's look. Harold rolled. And he eats And. Harold eats bugs. Now, we probably want to modify this just a little bit. The first thing we might want to do is change Harold to he, because a pronoun replaces a noun in order to avoid repetition. We because, don't want to say yeah, Harold we just don't want to repeat it over twice and over. in a sentence. Yeah. And there's a grammar issue we need to, excuse me, there's a punctuation issue we need to take care of, which is this. We need to put a comma. Not a period. Right. Or After the first independent clause, then we have the conjunction, and then we have the other independent clause. So it looks like this. We have an independent clause, comma, a coordinating conjunction, and then another independent what clause. What if he did he rolled and he eats bugs? Is that kind of still mm -hmm. repeating? or? Well, you could do that. Yeah. Okay. But it isn't like a uh, specific. Right. Like Right. <laughs> okay, let's look at the next one. Harold ate, Harold writes a paper. Now, we used and already. Think about our fanboys. Those are our coordinating conjunctions. So? Okay, Harold ate, so Harold writes a paper. There's a couple of problems with this compound sentence, and the first one I see is I have a past tense verb ate and a present tense verb writes. So I might want to change those if it doesn't make sense. Let's see. Harold ate so, or Harold ate so, Harold writes a paper. That doesn't really make yeah. sense. So, so we, you could change the... We will probably change verb. our verb to past tense so that they right. match. Again, we're probably going to change Harold to so he. that I don't have that repetition of Harold, Harold in the same sentence. I need to come up with a coordinating conjunction, which Leah did, so 
Harold ate, so he wrote a paper. Maybe he was hungry, and now he can write a paper because <laughs> he, can he can concentrate. Have you been working on Faces of History papers? Hopefully you're done with those or almost done. Maybe if you're stuck, you need to eat, and then you can finish up, right? That's okay. what the sentence says. <laughs> so finally here, I slept, mom erased the board. We're going to take these two independent clauses, join them with a coordinating conjunction, and then I will have a compound sentence. Joel, what coordinating conjunction would you like to use here? Um. <laughs> Any fanboy that I already slept, used and but so mom I slept, but mom erased the board. There's two it. punctuation capitalization issues here. The first one. I need to turn this period into a comma because that is my comma rule. And I'm going to, ooh, I wonder if mom should be capitalized or lowercase here. Does anyone know the rule um, for that? You, you don't capitalize it because, well, mom, you call your mom mom, but it could be any mom because well, everybody, a lot I of think people it, call it. I think mom, you mom. would capitalize it because okay. if it, and the mom or a single ah, one. Ah. wouldn't be kept. Large. The way we tell if mom is common or proper is we see if we could replace the name in here. So let's try it with my name. I slept, but Rebecca erased the board. Does that make sense? Uh -huh, yeah. It does. So we know that mom is taking the place of my name, so it actually should be capitalized. So that's how the rule works. It's I like slept. He and God because. Mm -hmm. But mom erased yeah. the board. Okay. And you wouldn't change it to I erased the board because right. it's a whole different person. Right. Okay. So here we have six independent clauses that we turned into three compound sentences by joining them together with different coordinating conjunctions. We are going to pause this video, and when we come back, we're going to talk about complex sentences and then get into compound complex sentences.